Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. It is 5 a.m. on this Thursday, July 30th, 2020. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen, along with Alex Fisher. And we are starting with some breaking news here this morning uh, of an earthquake to the south of us, uh, just around Santa Clarita area this morning. Yeah, that is our breaking news this morning. And Kevin is in the Pinpoint Weather Center tracking it all for you. Good morning, Kev. Uh, good morning, Alex. Yeah, we've been uh, tracking this. And uh, let's show you, go to right to the map. We'll show you where this earthquake is located. Uh, and you can see as I zoom on in here, it was a small quake, uh, only about a 4.2 on the Richter scale, 1.2 miles north of San Fernando, California. And you can see the red dots. Those are aftershocks of this 4.2. Uh, the big rings that you see are the uh, actual, uh, the initial shock. Again, I uh, haven't had any reports of damage, anything like that. In fact, uh, the USGS says uh, the magnitude R waves were around a 1.2. That's why we didn't really feel it. Uh, they kind of uh, send out those messages saying, you know, we may feel it. Uh, well, we didn't. Uh, 1.2, so very small for us here in Kern County from this initial earthquake uh, out of San Fernando. But uh, we'll continue to track this. Uh, but again, we just wanted to relay this information, a 4.2 earthquake about 1.2 miles north of San Fernando. And the aftershocks continue small, uh, but something we wanted to bring you this morning. Alex? I have a lot of friends in Southern California waking up early this morning and being active on social media. Now to the latest on the coronavirus crisis here in Kern County. And this morning, we'll hear from public health officials about this health crisis. But let's look at the latest numbers. Public Health reported 448 new cases yesterday, bringing the total number of positive tests to more than 17,000. Of those, more than two-thirds are considered active. More than 11,000 are recovering from the virus at home and more than 200 people are receiving treatment in a hospital in Kern County. 135 people have died from this virus since March. After weeks of delayed testing and rising COVID-19 cases here in Kern County, a new federal surge capacity testing site is now open. Yesterday, the new coronavirus surge testing site inside Harvest Hall at the Kern County Fairgrounds officially started operations. The new site will administer up to 5,000 tests per day and 60,000 tests over two weeks. Results are expected in two to five days, a far cry from current backlogs of as much as three weeks. This unit has their own lab, gets it within three days. No, it's free. People drive through. And, and it's really been very effective in all the major cities. And that is the subject of this interactive feedback poll this morning. We're asking you, do you think elected officials have done a good job handling the coronavirus pandemic? You can call or text us at 661-888-4617. Press 1 if you think, yes, that our elected officials have done a good job handling the virus and the pandemic. Two if not. You can also text, tweet, email, or Facebook your comments. Once again, our interactive feedback phone line is 661-888-4617, and we'll have another look at the results coming up. All right, thanks so much, Alex. Your time now is 5.03, and each day we report on the new coronavirus cases and deaths. It's our responsibility as TV journalists to give you the latest news, and recently that news hit home for a reporter at our sister station in Fresno. Madera Spab shares her heartbreaking story. That I never thought, I never thought this was going to happen to me. Growl. My grandma Flo was someone so special to me. <laughs> her maiden name was actually Madaris, and so for me to have that name was such a unique and special bond. Hi Madaris, this is Grandma Flo. The moment that I found out that my grandma had gotten coronavirus. I had just wrapped up for the day on a story about hospital capacity. I truly knew that my grandma was not gonna was not gonna make it for four almost.
almost four months I had been covering stories about what this virus does to the elderly and to those with pre-existing conditions. And that was my grandma. I felt an urge that I needed to go to Montana. I picked up everything and started driving. In those moments, all you think about is, I hope she doesn't, I hope she doesn't feel alone. And I love you. I asked if anybody could be with her. And they said two people can be with her at the very end, but you cannot have been exposed to COVID in 30 days. I put on a full suit over my clothes. I put on gloves. And then she said, here's the infamous N95 mask. And I go, wow, I've done so many stories about this. And now here I am. No, no, it's just you and me. Once she took her, her final breath, I just sat there with her. She wanted me to to have her wedding ring. And so every day going forward, this is this is what I'm gonna gonna wear. But the hardest thing with all of this is knowing that on July fourteenth my favorite person the strongest person that I knew was a statistic on the news. This is Grandma Blue. Love you. Bye bye. This virus is real. What we decide to do in our lives each day will affect everything. That's Medario Spab reporting. So heartbreaking. Well, plus, if you need any more motivation to donate, how about free ice cream? Houchin is teaming up with Dewars for its Pint for a Pint campaign. They're giving away a pint of ice cream to anyone who donates a pint of whole blood. You do not have to be a COVID-19 survivor to cash in on this deal. The blood drive is happening on Saturday outside the Dewars ice cream parlor on the corner of Ming and Buena Vista. It is going on from noon until 5. You can also get a free t-shirt and a free COVID-19 antibody test to see whether you've had the virus. Again, that is happening on Saturday. And there are more than 4.3 million known cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. And some fear the start of the new school year could result in a major spreading of the virus. John Lawrence has more. There's a lot of unknowns as students return to school this year. We all have a lot of questions, a lot of confusion, but we are, you know, we're in this together. We're kind of, we're all equally confused. That uncertainty extends to the White House's coronavirus task force. We don't know the full impact. We don't have the total database of knowing what there is to expect. Despite the ongoing threat, some governors are pushing for schools to reopen. Our kids are at the least risk from this virus and much lower risk than they are from seasonal influenza. Our kids also play the smallest role in transmission of the virus. But some health experts stress those students don't live in a vacuum. If the school serves as a place of spread, then we have a situation that goes well beyond the school. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten says her group is allowing safety strikes as a last option if educators feel that they're forced back to school in hazardous conditions. This is not how I want to go back, and I want to go back so bad. Because <laughs> I, I love teaching, and I miss my classroom, and I miss my kids. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 509 and back here at home, a local dance group is hoping to inspire kids to fall in love with reading. The Kern Dance Alliance teamed up with the Kern County Library and Kern Literacy Council to bring children's books to life through dance. It's called Books in Motion. 
The dance teams act out and narrate popular children's books using easy to learn choreography. These books and motion performances will be released digitally. I remember talking to you about them actually in the spring when they were going to be live performances at the library. Well, organizers say this program helps bring stories to life and get kids interested in reading. They say it also has the additional benefit of helping kids stay fit and active by teaching them the dance moves. Here in Kern County, Lamont Unified School District is having its first day of school today. Of course, it's happening virtually because of the coronavirus pandemic. Other school districts across the county are also expected to start virtual distance learning in the coming days and weeks. The American Civil, Liber a Civil Liberties Union is targeting a local school district claiming it created a hostile work environment for black staff and students. The ACLU sent a letter to the Greenfield Union School District. In it, the union claims seventh grade English teacher Key Jackson did not get her contract renewed after she filed a formal complaint against the district. The teacher said the district was treating black students and staff differently. The ACLU says Jackson was reprimanded for wearing a shirt that read phenomenally black during Black History Month in 2019. The letter claims she was accused of promoting a black power agenda. We reached out to district administration multiple times for comment, but have not heard back as of news time. Well, from a road work file, it is going to be a busy three weeks for California Avenue. And this is what you can expect during that time period as construction crews near another major milestone in the Thomas Roads Improvement Program. Lane closure started last night as crews work on the future Centennial Corridor Bridge and which will cross over California Avenue and connect the Westside Parkway to Highway 58 once it is complete. But for now, expect lane closures between Easton Drive and Morella Way. Those closures are happening tonight from 9 p.m. till 5 a.m. and they will continue for the first two weeks of August. And you can expect that Fridays and Saturdays. In more ways than one, 2020 has been an unforgettable year. So the Kern County Museum is inviting you to record their, your personal pandemic experience to document history in the making. 17's Taylor Schaub joins us live this morning to explain. Good morning, Taylor. Well, good morning, Alex. And our audience may recall a few months back, we did a story on the 1918 Spanish influenza and its damaging effects on Kern County. Well, curator Bethany Rice was inspired by the lost history of that period and hopes this new project will provide a comprehensive account of this critical chapter in our county's history. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It's a well-known quote that seemingly rings more true with every passing day of the coronavirus pandemic. That's something I think I'd really like to avoid for this pandemic. Bethany Rice is the curator of the Kern County Museum. She spent the last three months obsessively researching the 1918 Spanish influenza finding a distinct lack of personal accounts. No one wanted to talk about how bad the pandemic was. They wanted to go on with normal life. That's when the light bulb went off. Create a collection of first-hand accounts of how COVID-19 changed our community. Asking parents and children to fill out an online questionnaire for a new exhibit future generations can visit. These questionnaires and responses will be great to kind of show people in the future what it was like living in this time. Her goal? To paint a picture of an era lived through the lens of a global pandemic. What we're really trying to capture is how people live during this time. How people are feeling, if they lost someone, how they were celebrating or commemorating different holidays, different birthdays, that sort of thing. She also plans on showcasing the shocking similarities between the 1918 flu and the current battle we face. And what I'd love to do is do a side-by-side -side timeline of the 1918 pandemic and the COVID-19 pandemic and show how quickly the changes were for each of them. Hoping future generations learn from the mistakes of this difficult moment in our county's history. Well, Alex, it's a great way to get both parents and children involved during this time. And there's going to be two separate questionnaires, one for parents and one for children. They can be found on uh, the kerncountymuseum.org, and uh, that's going to be st starting on August 1st. In southwest Bakersfield, Taylor Schaub, 17 News.
national news this morning. Coronavirus has hit Capitol Hill. Texas Republican Congressman Louis Gomert says he tested positive. Overnight, rules changed on wearing masks, with lawmakers still at odds over unemployment expiring tomorrow. Tracy Potts has it all covered from Washington. Texas Republican Louis Gohmert, often seen without a mask, announced on Twitter that he tested positive for coronavirus. And participated in two hearings yesterday, largely without a mask. Very, very uh, irresponsible on his part. Masks will now be required in House offices and the chamber where lawmakers vote. The new rules come as a federal report shows 21 states in the red zone with cases rising. Florida and California report new records for deaths in one day. The nation just hit its highest daily death toll since May. And lawmakers have yet to agree on extending the $600 a week unemployment payment that expires tomorrow. The worst time to cut those benefits those extra benefits would be right now. President Trump is pitching a temporary fix. We want to take care of them now. The rest we can discuss later. But Democrats. This is not a serious proposal. And Republicans. That is completely, that's a completely unhinged position. Want a permanent solution. Some complain there's too much pork in the plan. Quit wasting money on things like Kennedy Center. Uh, the FBI building. Negotiations aren't going well. We want to extend UI. We are we are apart at this point on how to do it. More meetings are happening today. Protection from evictions is also still up in the air. A new analysis finds 40 percent of American renters might not be able to pay their rent and 12 million are at risk of being evicted. Tracy Potts, NBC News. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.